In this lesson, we'll wrap up our first simple shader and finally put it to use. Let's make an interactive script that lets us hover the mouse over a game object, like our example safety hat, and then swap to its highlighted counterpart. This will be a fun addition to any 3D user interface, adding some emphasis to your mouse pointer by making your object pop off the background with a little glow. Here's our current highlight shader graph, and what we want to do is toggle a specific mesh renderer between its normal material and its highlighted material. Now we want the default object to look like its natural state. When the time is right, we just want it to highlight. Now there are a few ways of doing this, and we're just going to keep it deliberately simple. And what I'm going to do is set up two different game objects, one that has the normal materials on it, and another that has the highlighted materials. We're going to disable the highlighted mesh renderer by default, and then only enable it when the mouse pointer touches the game object. Let's switch this safety hat's default material back to hard hat matte material, if it's not already. And we also need a mesh collider so we can detect the mouse pointer. So add component, physics, mesh collider. And that should get populated with the safety hat low model by default. Unity is smart enough to do that. Our logic is going to be performed by a script. So let's make a new C sharp script called mesh highlighter. Create C sharp script, mesh highlighter. And even though it doesn't do anything yet, we can attach this to the safety hat object. And let's make another instance of the safety hat with the highlighted material. Select the safety hat, right click duplicate, and let's just rename this to safety hat highlight. On this second instance of the hat, we should remove the mesh collider and the mesh highlighter script. Sorry, we probably should have duplicated the object before we added those. And then let's change the single material in the mesh renderer to hard hat highlight matte material. We can parent this version of the safety hat onto the original game object just for safekeeping. Now there will be some Z fighting since we have two exact meshes on top of one another. And I recommend that you just disable the mesh renderer of the highlighted hard hat and then only enable the mesh renderer of the original game object. Eventually our script will just toggle these components on or off as needed. And let's edit our mesh highlighter component. We didn't want to make this a scripting course, so if you don't want to type this out, feel free to just grab the finished mesh highlighter script from the resources and then just replace this blank version. But it's super short, and even if you aren't super confident with your scripting, this should be relatively painless to follow along. We want to apply the script to our game object with a mesh renderer. So let's enforce that with a require component attribute at the top. Require component type of mesh renderer. Let's define a couple of fields to reference our mesh renderers. Now one mesh renderer will just be private. So let's call that mesh renderer original mesh. The other mesh renderer I do want to expose in the inspector. Let's tag that with a serialize field attribute. This can still be private, and we'll call that highlighted mesh. This one we need to populate in the inspector, hence the serialize field attribute. In our start method, let's just get a reference to the original mesh. Original mesh equals get component mesh renderer. And now let's make a simple method to enable and disable the meshes. I'll call it enable highlight public void, enable highlight. Let's pass in a boolean on off. This will determine the state of whether the highlight is active or not. We only want this logic to run if we've populated our highlighted mesh in the inspector. So let's add a little guard in here if highlighted mesh is not equal to null. And then inside, let's switch our enabled property of the mesh renderer based on what state we pass in as an argument. Highlighted mesh dot enabled equals our on or off state and original mesh dot enabled equals not our on or off state. When we want the highlight, we disable the original mesh and enable the glowing mesh and vice versa. To toggle the highlight on or off, we just want to take advantage of mono behaviors on mouse enter and on mouse exit built in methods. Remember that we added a mesh collider component to the game object. So if I define a private void, on mouse enter method. 
This will invoke when my mouse pointer touches the mesh collider for the first time. And we can simply add a enable highlight true inside of here. And then by the same token, we also can define a private void on mouse exit when the mouse pointer leaves the game object. Inside, we just add enable highlight false. So this means that the first time that we mouse around and touch the mesh collider, the script will enable the highlighted hard hat, and then it's going to disable the original hard hat. And then once you drag the mouse pointer outside of the game object, the script will disable the highlighted mesh render and then enable a normal one. And there's one more thing I probably want to add, and that's to make sure that the highlight is off by default. In our start method, let's plug in an extra enable highlight false somewhere in here. And really that's all we need to do as far as the highlight logic goes. This is super simple, so that's why I went with this approach. It is less efficient because we do have an extra mesh renderer component and an extra game object, but it keeps the scripted logic relatively easy. Now, if I had to do several hundred objects like this, I probably would create a structure that would map one set of materials to another and then just swap them out at runtime. That's probably unnecessary for a handful of game objects in our sample scene. Save the script and let's go back to the editor. Find the safety hat object in the highlighted mesh field. Just drag in the safety hat highlight game object and save your scene. And that should do it. We should have our mesh highlighter functional at least for the safety hat. So enter play mode, hover your mouse over the safety hat, and look at that. Our mesh glows using the highlight shader. Okay, terrific. This is one application of our shader graph. Imagine you can do all sorts of stuff with this little glow shader if you wanted to call attention to your game object at runtime. If you had a special pickup object or part of the screen that you wanted to call attention to, you could just add a glow shader there and then draw your viewer to that part of the screen. Now, how you want to use this is really up to you. For your challenge, you might want to try to practice setting up more game objects like our safety hat. And note that you'll need to create a new material for each game object that you want to highlight. Really, any material that needs a highlighted version, you'll need to make a duplicate material. And you also need to make a duplicate proxy object that's going to hold all of the highlighted materials on a separate mesh render. Now, once you do that, you just add a mesh highlighter script to the original object and then assign the highlighted mesh renderer to the empty field. After you set that up, your object will highlight whenever you mouse over it. Okay, pretty cool. Set up as many game objects in the sample scene as you want with this effect. Go ahead and pause the video and continue to the end of the lecture when you're ready. Well, there it is. We won't go through all the steps for setting up the other game objects, but here's my example scene showing a bunch of the various props, the jigsaw, the hammer, the five gallon bucket, and various other parts of the room highlight when my mouse crawls over them. And note that I had to set up a lot of extra materials for each highlighted object. Some objects have more than one material, so they need to have more than one highlighted material. We have a duplicate little proxy for each highlighted game object. And the original game objects have a mesh collider component and a mesh highlighter script. Okay, well, that takes us to the basics of creating a shader graph and demoing one specific application of this shader. In the next lesson, let's look at how we can expand the shader graph a little bit more. And we can add more than one texture and create a small reusable set of nodes called a subgraph.